All right, so let's review quickly what we were talking about last time. So we were talking about the tangent space uh, to A at a variety of X, a variety X. And uh, how is this defined? So what we, we did is we assumed uh, that uh, A was equal to zero uh, in X, uh, which was an affine variety contained in AN for some N. All right, uh, now uh, this makes sense because uh, for any point of a variety, you can pick an affine neighborhood. So just assume that affine neighborhood is X and then do a linear change of coordinates uh, to make that point equal to zero. So, so that's okay to, to make that assumption. And then we define the uh, TAX to be uh, the vanishing of F1, the linear terms uh, of every element in the ideal of X. Okay. And uh, the, these F1s here are, are linear forms. They have no constant term because, uh, uh, because they all have to vanish at the origin. So uh, this, this is really a, it's an algebraic subset of AN, but it's not just an algebraic subset. It's actually a, a vector subspace, right? All right, so um, so you can really think of the tangent space as a vector space as we're used to thinking of. Now, the, the one uh, problem with this definition or, or apparent problem is it looks like it might possibly depend on the embedding, right? There's, there's multiple ways to put X into AN, maybe even with uh, different values of N, and, uh, and maybe different ways to shift it around. So, um, uh, so but we'd really like the tangent space to be sort of a, an invariant of, uh, of, the, of the variety and, and the point. Um, so we are going to approve a, a result in that direction. And our first, uh, our first move that way was this lemma here, that uh, the tangent space, or rather the dual of the tangent space, uh, is equal to the ideal of a mod the ideal of a squared. Okay, uh, this doesn't quite do what we want yet because the uh, ideal of a is living in uh, in a of x, right? But you know, a of x depends on, on our choice of affine neighborhood. Uh, so we're not quite there yet. But uh, let's prove this uh, next lemma, and then we'll, we'll see if that does the job. So uh, lemma uh, let uh, S inverse be the multiplicative subset of um, all uh, F in A of X such that uh, F is uh, not in the ideal of A. All right, you can check this as a multiplicative subset um, and uh, we know that uh, IA is, remember this is a maximal ideal in, in the coordinate ring AX. Okay, and the statement of the lemma is that uh, IA mod IA squared uh, is isomorphic to, well, if you, if you localize these modules, um, we're claiming that doesn't change it. If you localize with a, a multiplicative a subset S. Okay, uh, now this, this, this uh, isomorphism is a statement of the lemma. But let me also, uh, before I do the proof, write down the consequences. So the consequences of this is uh, we know that uh, if you take uh, inver S inverse IA, that is a way to compute uh, the local ring at A. Oops, not the, not the squared. Okay, where, so IA is... Uh, is contained in O X A, the local ring of X at A. So remember, this is the local ring. And uh, and this here will be the, the unique maximal ideal. It's a local ring, so how's the unique maximal ideal? Okay, and the point here, so, so don't get confused, the notation's a little funny. Uh, this I parentheses A, uh, means uh, the ideal of the point A uh, in, in A of X, this affine coordinate ring, where uh, I uh, subscript A uh, means the, the unique maximal ideal in the local ring of X at A. Of course, uh, they are closely uh, related. Um, well, they're related by, by this form, uh, by this formula here, here, right? You have to take the localization. Um, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, okay, and then the point is that uh, uh, from this isomorphism here, we see it doesn't depend on any choices. It didn't depend on which coordinate chart you picked. Uh, this isomorphism between S inverse IA and uh, IA, uh, that, would, that always works no matter which chart you pick. Okay, all right, so let's do the proof of this. All right, so uh, let me just uh, say it this way. So, so note that the I a mod I a squared. Uh, so we're kind of thinking of it as an A of X module, right? Uh, that's how we're doing the, the localization. Uh, but actually, uh, this, this I a mod I a squared is a, a of X uh, mod uh, I a module. Right, I mean, if something's in an I of A, it's going to act trivially, trivially on this because uh, uh, it'll get uh, something in I of A times something in I of A, well, it land in I of A squared. Okay, but remember this here, this is a maximal ideal here, so this is a field. In fact, it's isomorphic to, to K. Uh, all right, so so, th so this thing is already a module over a field, so, so, so localizing doesn't change anything. So localizing at S uh, doesn't change anything. Okay, so we, so what I'm saying is I of A mod I of A squared uh, is isomorphic to S inverse I of A squared. And, uh, and then there's a result from commutative algebra that localization uh, commutes with quotients. So we, now we can just apply that. And, I, uh, and commutes with the, the square in two. All right, so, so we have the result. All right, now we're ready uh, for our definition of smoothness. So a point A in X is called a smooth, uh, also sometimes a regular or non-singular. All those uh, mean the same thing. Uh, if uh, the tangent space to A at X is equal to the tangent cone. At x. Okay, and uh, if it's not smooth, we'll call it singular. Looking bad, back at our examples here, we can see this agrees uh, with our intuition. So looking at the origin here, uh, the tangent cone and the tangent space are the same line here. So that's the smooth point. Uh, when we looked back over here, the tangent cone was just uh, this, uh, these uh, two lines uh, crossing in the middle here, you know, that approximate the function linearly. Uh, but it wasn't a vector space, so the, the tangent space had to be the, the whole space. So this is not smooth. That's what we expect. This uh, crossing here is, is not a smooth point. It's not a, a manifold at that point. And then uh, looking over here again, um, there's this little cusp here, even though uh, it sort of looks like maybe the the tangent uh, line should just be this cone. It turns out to, to take up the whole space. Um, so, so that tells us this is us that this is a singularity as, as we expect. So the, the tangent space is the whole space. The cone is just this single line. All right, now, now checking that uh, the tangent cone is equal to the uh, tangent space is uh, usually not so hard uh, because uh, because you know it's, they're just vector spaces and cones. So uh, let, let's prove this lemma here. So um, uh, the following are equivalent. The following are equivalent. Uh, a uh, x is or a is the smooth point. Of x and that's equivalent to uh, the dimension of the tangent space. Uh, is equal to the local dimension, the co-dimension of x in x of a. So that's, that's just the dimension of x at a. 
x is pure dimensional, this is just the dimension of x. And uh, vampire c is uh, the dimension of the tangent space uh, is less than or equal to the co-dimension of x at a. All right, so so let's let's just do the proof quickly. So um, let's do a, a implies b first. Uh, this follows from a result we had that the uh, the dimension of the tangent cone uh, is equal to the co-dimension of x at a. All right, so so recall that result, and that takes care of this, right? So if the if if a is smooth, then the tangent cone and the tangent space and the tangent cone are the same, um, so they have the same dimension. So there you go. All right, now uh, let's do what b implies c. Oh, that's trivial. I'll just go check there. All right, now let's do c implies a. So the thing we need to remember here is that the um, the tangent cone. So the tangent, uh, uh, sorry, the, the cone at A and X, remember, is always contained in the tangent space uh, to A and X. And uh, remember that this one has dimension uh, is equal to the co-dimension, right, uh, of A and X right here. And, and according to our hypothesis, C, uh, this is bigger than the dimension uh, the tangent space to a at x. All right, uh, so what do we have here? We have that um, we have here a space of larger, larger than or equal dimension contained in the space of smaller dimension. So that, that means the dimensions must be equal. And furthermore, the tangent space is a linear space, so it's irreducible, right? All right, so uh, if you have a space uh, of the same dimension containing irreducible in, in an irreducible space, uh, that, that implies that they're equal. Okay, and, and that proves that uh, A. All right, let's, uh, let's make a remark relating this a little bit to commutative algebra. So uh, A is smooth, a smooth point of X uh, is, is equivalent to saying that uh, OXA, the local ring uh, of X at A, uh, is a regular local ring. All right, so uh, a, a regular local ring, I think, it, if you remember the definition, it means the, the minimal number of uh, generators uh, is equal to the Kroll dimension, uh, which, which uh, you can basically translate into, um, uh, you know, in, in, into, into this condition here. So, um, yes, so you can study that just from commutative algebra. That's where the name, that's why we have the uh, regular is one of the names for for smoothness, because uh, that comes from commutative algebra. So that's, that's a good thing to know. Uh, one fact that follows from this is, so from commutative algebra, we know that uh, irregular local rings are always integral domains. So uh, if we translate that into geometry, uh, this tells me that, um, that x uh, is irreducible, or locally irreducible. Uh, at a smooth point. Or uh, another way to say this is if x has uh, two components, then every point of their intersection will be singular. So, you know, here's my thing, and here's my other piece here. Okay, so, so there's some intersection there. Uh, these will all be singular points. Okay, that's not a great picture, but hopefully you get the idea. All right, so uh, let's now prove a proposition that shows how smoothness is related to maybe what you're used to from uh, from studying manifolds or something, is that you can uh, detect it by uh, using derivatives. So this is called the affine uh, Jacobi uh, criterion. All right, so let's let uh, x or a and x be a point 
I point out. Uh, on an affine variety x in an and uh, let's say yeah the ideal of x is generated by r elements f1 through fr uh, and the result says then uh, uh, a is a smooth point uh, if and only if uh, the rank of the Jacobi matrix or the Jacobian matrix I should say uh, so that's just the matrix of derivatives of the F's with respect to the various X's so the, the XI are the coordinates on AN and the F's are the generators of the ideal so you put those into a matrix, um, and if this rank is rank is, uh, rank is at least n minus the uh, local co-dimension, co uh, the dimension of x at a. Okay, uh, and in this case. Uh, the rank is equal. Okay, and I should have said this, but of course we need to evaluate these derivatives at the point A. So this is just a matrix of numbers, so we can compute its rank. And um, let me just uh, give the matrix a name. Let's call it J just for convenience later in the proof. All right, so, so here's the proof. Now remember to compute the tangent space, uh, what we did before is we shifted the coordinates so that the point A was at the origin. So that's what we need to do here. Let's look at, at one of these generators at Fi and look at Fi of x and I want to sort of uh, shift the coordinates so that A is at the origin. So to do that, we can just do the, the multivariable uh, Taylor expansion of F, right? So how does that go? Well, we, the constant term will be f of a, and then the linear terms will be, we'll have to take the sum, uh, d, sorry, that, that's an fi, d fi uh, dx j times uh, x j minus a j, right? So, and, and then you sum, you have to sum up all over all j. And then, and then there's higher order terms where you have, you know, uh, xj minus aj squared and, and the cross products. Uh, but we're not going to worry about those. All right, now, of course, uh, fi of a is, uh, is zero because uh, uh, a is in, in x and f are the defining the vanishing locus of x. So that's just zero. And then um, let's go ahead and, and rename our coordinates. That's a dfi dxj. Uh, we'll just call this a yj higher order terms. Okay, where of course a yj is just a xj minus aj. Um, and these are the new coordinates I wanted. Uh, so so a uh, equals zero in, or equals the origin in, in y coordinates. In y coordinates. And uh, this i should be a j, of course, here. Okay, and so now we know by definition the tangent space to A at X is just the vanishing locus of, of the initial terms of the FIs. So it's just the vanishing locus of the set of all of these things. Sum D, F, I, D, X, uh, J, Y, J. Like this. Okay, but uh, you can see this vanishing locus just well, what is this? This is just uh, this is just the kernel of the matrix J, right? So remember, the matrix J up here is just uh, these all these partial derivatives. Okay, and once again, I forgot to write. We're evaluating these uh, derivatives at A, right? Um, so if you multiply this matrix J by a vector of Y's, uh, and you're looking at the kernel, that's exactly the vanishing of, of these things. Okay, so uh, now we're pretty much done.
we have that A, the point A is smooth, uh, is equivalent to uh, the dimension of the kernel of J uh, being less than the co-dimension uh, of X at A. And that's, uh, that's just by the, our most recent proposition. Let's see uh, this one right here, right? So back down to here, and uh, but but this condition here, that's the same as saying that the rank of J uh, is uh, greater than or equal to n minus the codimension. All right, and, and that 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 was the statement of the theorem, right? Uh, rank is uh, at least n minus the codimension, and then then the equality statement uh, comes from. The uh, part A up here, or part B, right? Okay. Uh, so we got the proof. So the point of this uh, this proposition is that you can determine smoothness just by taking derivatives, kind of the way uh, you expected to, uh, with uh, smooth manifolds or something. Okay. Let me just now make a, a remark about this, and I think I'll assign the rest of this as an exercise. So a remark is that there is a, there is a projective version, uh, Jacobi criterion, uh, meaning if you have a, a variety defined by some homogeneous polynomials or homogeneous ideal, you can uh, just uh, take partial derivatives of of the generators of the homogeneous ideal to determine whether it's uh, smooth or not, uh, very similar similarly to this. So I will, um, I think I'll sign the, the exact statement of that as an exercise. Uh, uh, the outlines of proof in the notes. Okay, um, here's another corollary that we'll talk about. So one thing to notice from the, the statement of uh, this proposition is that uh, the Fs had to generate the ideal of X. What if you have a, a variety where you just have some defining equations, but you don't know, know whether they generate the whole ideal, maybe the ideal they generate is not radical. Um, well, we still have uh, this corollary here. So uh, let F1 through FR be polynomials. And uh, let A be a point in the vanishing locus. contained in AN. Um, and I guess uh, we're going to call X uh, the, the variety defined by this. Okay, and, and once again to emphasize the ideal of X uh, is the radical of the ideal generated by this S. Okay, well, what's the statement? Uh, if uh, the rank of the uh, Jacobian matrix, so I'll just call it a J, say it defined the same way as we did before. If this, if the rank is uh, as big as, as we wanted it to be last, last time. Um, then X is smooth. All right, and, uh, and B, if the rank is equal uh, to, uh, to R to the number of generators, uh, then X is a smooth. Uh, at a of a local dimension n minus r. All right, okay, the thing that's missing here is uh, is the converse. So if x is smooth, uh, you won't know that the rank of the Jacobian matrix is, is equal to this. Um, if you want to, to have that, then you have to be sure that these uh, this ideal is a radical ideal. All right, let's just say a few words about the proof. So uh, for part A, uh, we can uh, add extra generators. So that um, uh, the ideal of X, you know, the radical ideal is generated by F1 up to uh, FR and then FR plus one up to fs right and uh, this uh, this just adds uh, 
as extra rows to the Jacobian matrix. Uh, so, so the rank can only go up. Okay, and, and then you apply the previous uh, uh, proposition, right? Okay, and, and then for part B, we have the, the co-dimension uh, in X at A is, um, well, what is it? It's, it's at least as big as N minus R. Why is that? Because uh, X is defined by R equations, and each equation can cut down the dimension by at most one. All right, so we have uh, we have this. So then we have um, so this shows that um, r would have to be uh, bigger than or equal to uh, n minus the co-dimension. All right, just by uh, rearranging the inequality. Um, so uh, this implies that um, by our previous proposition that x is smooth at a and also the, it said that, that we get equality here so so r equals n minus uh, co-dimension in x of a um, so that that tells me that the co-dimension is um, um, n minus r like i wanted and let me make a quick remark about the, the statement of of our theorem that um, this this number here, um, if you know, if, if x is just pure dimensional, so you don't have to worry about uh, differing local co-dimensions. Uh, co uh, this is just is you should just think of this as the co-dimension of uh, x in in a n. All right, so that that's that's really what you should be thinking of this number as I think is the easier way to remember it. Okay, I think it's time for us to do an example. So let's look at uh, x1, or I, I think we were calling this x3. Um, x3 is equal to the vanishing locus of x2 squared minus x1 cubed. Okay, and the, and the picture that we, we were looking at was uh, it was this little cusp here, and we decided that it should be singular at this cuff, and it kind of looks cusp, and it looks like it uh, should be smooth otherwise. Um, so let's try and apply the Jacobi criteria. There's only one generator, so there's only going to be one row. It'll just be a df a dx1, and there's two columns for the two variables, df uh, dx2. So uh, this matrix will just be uh, using our, our calculus skills, 3x1 squared and uh, 2x2. Okay, and, and the question is, uh, when is uh, this matrix, or sorry, maybe when does I have rank uh, greater than or equal to and uh, remember that the thing we want here is that the co-dimension of x in, in the affine space. So this is a x is a curve in a plane, so it's a one. All right. Um, so the answer to this question is uh, is okay when uh, well when either of these numbers are non-zero. So uh, when x uh, one is not zero or x two is not zero. So as long as x one is not zero or x two is not zero, uh, then this is smooth. Uh, and at the origin, then the Jacobi matrix is just a zero matrix, um, then it's singular. Okay, and, and that, that lines up with our intuition from this picture here. Uh, the origin is the singular point at the cusp, and the rest of it is smooth. Okay, uh, now I want to mention another good consequence of the Jacobi criterion. Um, so one thing we should notice that, uh, is that a condition like um, uh, rank uh, being greater than or equal to something uh, is an open condition. Uh, 
and what do I mean by that? I mean um, having the rank of B small uh, corresponds to vanishing of minors of the matrix. Those are defined by algebraic equations. So, so that so the the complement of this is closed. Um, so, so rank being bigger than or equal to something is an open condition. So, so that implies uh, this corollary. Uh, the, the set of smooth points. Uh, it is uh, is open. All right. Okay. Um, it's harder to prove that every variety has a smooth point, right? Um, but in fact, it's true. So, um, so this result is called a generic smoothness, uh, which says that uh, the set of smooth points is dense in a variety. All right, uh, this corollary, which, which is not hard to prove, just says that the, the a set of smooth points is open. You know, if x is irreducible, and if you can find a smooth point, then you will know that it's dense. Um, a generic smoothness says a little bit more. Says you can actually uh, find a smooth point on each irreducible component. All right, I think that's all I'm going to say uh, in this video about smoothness. So I will talk to you soon.